Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in section 5.7, headed Word Order in Greek Sentences. There are two subsections in this section. The second relates to what's on the board here. Ignore that for the time being while I talk to you about what's in the first section, which is all very nicely explained, um, and but it's worth a quick glance, and it's worth just being aware of some of the complexity that lies ahead of us. Duff highlights that because in Greek, case endings denote which noun is the subject and which noun is the object, it's possible to shuffle the subject and the object around in the sentence and keep the same basic meaning. Look at the examples he gives. He has two sentences which both mean God uh, is teaching the Jews or the Jewish people. Hotheos, God, didaske is teaching tus Eudaius, God is teaching the Jews, or tus Eudaius, the Jews, hotheos, God, didaske, is teaching. Now, both of these sentences have the same subject, the same verb, and the same object, but unlike in English, it's possible to shuffle the order and keep the subject and the object the same. Just note the contrast with English, it's kind of interesting to think about it for a second. In English, the way that you know the subject and the object is, is only really because of the word order in most sentences. So Steve sees the camera and the camera sees Steve. In those sentences, because I've switched the order of the subject and the object, the meaning of the sentence is, so to speak, reversed because neither Steve nor the camera have any other indication of uh, what's the subject and what's the object. But in Greek, because the subject and the object are defined by the case endings, uh, it's possible for Greek writers and Greek speakers, and here's the crucial point, they can use variation in word order to convey what Duff calls a difference in emphasis. And he's right here, uh, exactly right, to highlight this. The only reason I want to be slightly hesitant, and this isn't a disagreement with what Duff is saying in the slightest, is just to alert you to the degree of complexity and debate that goes on here. Um, what we mean by emphasis is actually potentially very, very complicated. So let, without wanting to oversimplify things, it is possible to see um, that maybe putting something first in the sentence does lean slightly more heavily on that part of the sentence or that element in the sentence. As Duff says, and if you've got a long sentence, putting something at the end maybe puts a stress on that. It's like you wait for the climax of the sentence and then it comes. So maybe the second one is more along the lines of, it is the Jews whom God is teaching. The Jews it is that God is teaching or something like that. But again, just sit lightly to that. Be aware that what you're looking at here in this uh, material in the first subsection is just cracking the door open on a whole fascinating world of subtlety and nuance in relation to how word order in Greek sentences influences the, the, the nuances of the meaning of the sentence. We've got lots of exciting stuff ahead to think about in relation to that. Don't get too hung up on it now, though. Just be aware of the issues as it's around the corner. Okay, there's the first portion. Now here's the second, and this is a little more uh, significant because you're going to be coming up against this a fair amount in the coming weeks and months. So let's take a look at this uh, stuff on the board now. Right, I want you to first look at the left-hand side of the board, and you'll notice there are three sentences here, all of which probably look quite familiar in structure. Let's look at them in turn. Uh, blepo to hieron to kalon, literally something like I see the temple, the beautiful. So I see, excuse me, the beautiful temple. Uh, here, the second sentence, blepo to hieron to kuriu, I see the temple of the Lord. To kuriu is in the genitive, so of the Lord. And then finally, thirdly, blepo to hieron en terger, I see the temple in the land. Now, all of these look fairly familiar, and all of them you can see uh, how you translate them without any great difficulty. But now you look across to the right-hand side of the pay, of the um, of the board, and you see three so-called sandwich constructions. Sandwich constructions, and this is important. This is what this section is all about. Look at the first one to begin with. You notice we've already encountered this construction, and the colours of the different elements of the sentence highlight what's happened. What have we done? to turn this sentence into this one. Well, very simply, we've taken to kalon and we've blocked it right 
in there. So, and we've lost the to as well, which is intriguing. We'll maybe come to that at some point in a second. Um, but blepo, to hieron, the temple, beautiful. So the beautiful temple. And we hardly notice that there's anything strange about this because it just so happens that this is how we tend to construct um, attributive uses of the adjective in English. But it is uh, distinct and different from this. And it represents a sandwich construction so-called because... The qualifying word or phrase, that is the word or phrase that qualifies the noun, is the meat in the sandwich, the bread of which is composed by the noun, hieron, and its article, to. So you've got a sandwich, it's sandwiched there in between to and hieron. Now here's the crucial thing. You can do that with other things besides adjectives. You can do it with... Uh, genitival phrases to crew you, and you can do it here with uh, prepositional phrases. These are just the examples that you've got here. Notice that what's happened is this has just been dropped in here. So we've gone from blepo to hieron to kuriu to blepo to hieron to kuriu hieron. The of the Lord's temple. I see the of the Lord's temple. And then here, blepo to the in the land temple. I see the in the land temple. And this is less intuitive simply because this isn't how we tend to say things in English. However, it is how people tend to say and to write things in Greek. And the simple reason is it removes ambiguity. It removes ambiguity. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you have a long and complicated sentence, maybe with multiple verbs and so multiple subjects and multiple objects and prepositional phrases and genitival phrases and so on and so forth, you can have all kinds of uh, clutter, so to speak, floating around the sentence, genitival phrases, objects and so on. And it wouldn't be immediately clear which prepositional phrase or which adjective or which genitival phrase or which other qualifying phrase went with which noun. How do you show easily and compactly that to kuru goes with to hieron? The answer is you plonk it in the middle. And so the rule for interpreting sandwich constructions is that anything that you find in the meat of the sandwich belongs with, so to speak, the bread of the sandwich. So to kuriu qualifies to hieron. That's the rule for interpreting these sandwich constructions. And once you see it like that, you realise it's actually really neat and a really efficient way of using word order subtly to tell you what goes with what. Of course, what causes confusion initially, as Duff says, is when you first come across something like this, to tu, People go cross-eyed and they're like, what on earth's going on? I've got two articles next to each other. And they get all worried and anxious and they think, I don't know how to interpret this. It looks really strange. Don't think like that. They're meant to think like that. What you've just come across is a dead giveaway that you must have a sandwich construction. If you have two articles next to each other, obviously you must have a sandwich construction. That's got to go with something. And the something it goes with is going to be over there. So when you see the two articles next to each other, don't panic, don't worry. Just recognise that there's something down the track which, would, once you've found it, will help you to interpret the sentence. So seeing something confusing, actually, is a good sign because it shows that you want to look out for a particular feature, in this case, a sandwich construction. Just one other um, thing to highlight. You notice that um, if you compare uh, to here on to calon with and what it turns into with to hieron to kuriu and what it turns into, well, there's a, an extra article found in these two, which is, uh, which, sorry, an extra article that you'd expect to find in these two, which is, which is not here, but is present in this one. Let me try and put that a little bit more clearly. Um, to kalon goes to just kalon. So this article, to, disappears when we cross over and make it into a sandwich construction. But where's the article, the corresponding article over here, which has disappeared when we've crossed over and made it into a sandwich construction? Well, the answer is sometimes it is written in. 
sometimes you could have blepo to hieron to to kuryu, and the to will be written in here, same as you could have in there, and it's a footnote to that effect uh, in Duff on page 62, bottom of page 62. You don't often find it, well, not that often, but for the simple reason that these constructions themselves, without the sandwich construction, aren't actually such classy Greek, such efficient Greek as these. So in general, and again, this is such a generalisation, um, but you should expect to find the sandwich constructions more often, simply because they're a really good way of conveying exactly what you mean. Um, but don't let them face you. You've got all the details here. We're going to come across plenty of them in the examples at the end of the chapter, which we'll get to in a couple of videos' time. Just one more uh, quick uh, point, and this is a favour for me, really. Uh, I've been, I'd appreciate your thoughts on the audio of this video and the one before and the one that's just coming, because uh, I've been having some trouble with the microphone, and so I'm just doing these videos directly to the microphone uh, that's built into the camera. So if the audio is bad for you, please leave a comment to that effect, or if it works out well and you can hear it fine, again, please let me know, because I'd rather not have to fiddle around with the microphone if it works well enough for you guys and you can hear it clearly. So uh, please do let me know what you think. But in the meantime, keep working at the Greek, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in no time at all. God bless. Bye for now.